Down here at Seattle Center. We had a call that some kind of disturbance going on down here. Seattle Center's dark. A lot of shadows. My pappy, he's come down here and playing sometime. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Shh. Wait a second, wait a second. You hear that? <laughs> Skateboarders. Two of them. Cousins. No, 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 no. Brothers, brothers. Officer Argenzia, area secure. Seattle, Washington. We are inside Key Arena. It's the 2008 LG Action Sports World Championships. Hello, everyone. I'm Jimmy Coleman, standing alongside Paul Zitzer, and we are on the skateboard street course. We're getting ready to kick this competition off, and we've got a pretty big change in the format this year. In the past, it's been traditional two 45-second runs, best run counts. This time around, they divided the course up into three different sections. There's going to be an eight-minute jam session per section. You're going to be given a score on each of the three sections. Average together, that's your total score. Now, what that's going to do, it's going to play out a bit here with some of the strategies with some of these athletes. Right, and that's more than just a technical change. It's really going to affect how these results turn out, I think, because, for instance, Rodolfo Ramos is here. He's the two-time defending champ, but he did it with the old format, staying on his board for 45 seconds, being consistent, putting a good run in. But with this different format, it's about the level of difficulty that's really going to matter. Consistency isn't going to be as big of a factor. And with Paul Rodriguez and Greg Lutzka here, those guys have the hardest tricks in the business. They could really shake things up for Rodolfo. So it's a big change for 08. It's going to be interesting. Let's get to it. I'm a big fan of the format change because a lot of these guys that are known as the true street skaters, you're gonna chance, you're gonna get a chance to really see their talent shine through here, which you don't get to see in a traditional 45 second run, which is what most contests usually have. There's a list of the guys. It's gonna be heat one of jam number one. They're gonna divide it up into two heats, so we've got seven skaters here in this first jam. Format was cool. I mean, you know, there's th you know three sections. And basically, it's not like a run. Runs, you like fall, and then you're kind of out. So it's good. You can actually make up for, for your fall. So. We have time to try like harder tricks, you know? Two jams, two eight-minute jams, one section, and then another section. And then they take you to the big 12 stair, the big kumina. Gym sessions, so pretty much you, got, you can do whatever you want. And that's exactly what these guys are going to be doing. You've got room to improve on your uh, score throughout the jam. It's an eight-minute jam session. Clock has started now. You see uh, Kyle Berard started off the 50-50 down the hubble edge. Got a couple hubble edges here. We get this rail with a four-stair set. Yeah, and I think the format, in some cases, pretty much everyone loves it. It doesn't really work against anyone, but some people seem to fare better under this type of format where there is that there is that opportunity to step off and not get penalized and get sent home packing. See Curtis going for the front side, blunt slide down the hubba, falling off, but hey, he gets another try at it. Well, street skating has, has progressed so much in the last couple of years that, I mean, you see a lot of these guys putting down these crazy tricks and video parts and whatnot, and it takes them attempt after attempt after attempt to pull something like that off. And here in this jam session, you've got eight minutes to get out there and basically, you know, get down 10, 12, 13, 14 tries, whatever it takes to get that down. And if you get that one big trick, that could be the one thing that, that puts you at the top of the leaderboard in this particular jam session. No, you're absolutely right. But you don't want to spend too much time getting hung up on one trick, because every time you fall, that means you're missing out on making something. And with some of these guys, they're just hammering tricks out left and right. Jeremy Rogers, 
made a few things. Jason Barr, we already saw him do a kickflip crooked grind. Well, I was going to ask you, does it look like he's trying to kickflip the 50-50 that thing, or is he trying to crooked grind that thing? And you said he's already pulled one. I mentioned earlier, eight minutes. I made it sound like it's a lot of time. It actually goes by pretty quick. As you can see, we're already at the halfway mark here. So Wagner Ramos throwing a little switch crooked grind down that rail. Although when you're skating towards a rail switch, I don't know if anything's too little. But you'll see this is, uh, this is sort of the smaller section of the course. Big stuff yet to come. Jeremy Rogers going for a nolly heel crooked grind, I believe. Curtis Colomonico with the front side crooked grind. Fabrizio Santos, AKA the Breeze, trying to kick flip down that rail set. Fabrizio then getting in the way of Jeremy Rogers, screwing up his whole rotation. Well, that's another thing that's about, I, if there is a downside, you've got seven guys on this one obstacle here, and that's a lot of bodies to pack into this one area here. So if you're setting up for a rail and somebody else is trying to run up the stairs, you kind of get blocked on certain variations. But the guys realize that coming into it, nobody's too stressed. They realize it's gonna happen. Looks like the Breeze is trying to go for the kick flip to crooked grind down that rail. Oh, Curtis with the 360 flip. Down the stairs, kickflip frontside nose slide from Jeremy Rogers. That's huge. You got Jason Barr working hard again on what appears to be a kickflip to backside crooked grind. Fabrizio coming with the nose blunt slide. You know, I think somebody like Fabrizio, maybe this, this jam format doesn't help him out that much because, you know, part of his appeal is his style and how he sort of breezes through the course but you don't get to see all that, you know, when it's sort of just one, one hitters. Time winded down here, we're just under two and a half minutes. And again, we're gonna have another heat of skaters still to session this part of the course. You saw Kyle Berard going for the kickflip down the steps. He's sort of, you know, he's a little out of his element, skating stairs and rails. He's sort of known as a transition skater. This isn't helping him too much. Well, I was going to say, Kyle uh, actually got himself a podium finish. I believe it was 2006. Uh, but back then, that was when it was the traditional 45 second runs, and you had to ride the same course that the BMXers were using. And as you said, he's more of a transition skater, and he did very well. And back then, we had a couple of 10 foot quarter pipes and some bowl corner elements here. Like you said, he's a little bit out of his element. Trying to kick flip down the stairs. Curtis coming back with the front side blunt slide to Fakie down the stairs, nicely done. Curtis is one of these guys who will always bring something out to surprise everyone. He looks, he looks super wild and out of control, and then he just makes tricks perfectly. Well, I know it's tough to be a judge at one of these things, but right now, well, who do you think is going to be the standout out of this first group here in jam number one? Well, I've seen uh, Wagner making a few hard tricks. Jeremy Rogers, despite that fall right there, is looking really good. Um, I haven't seen too much from Berard or Mike Peterson. Um, salad grind from Curtis. I think Curtis is looking good. Fabrizio too, kickflip over the rail, sticking at that time perfectly. Jeremy Rogers getting hung up on the kickflip to crooked grind down the hub ledge. We are under the minute mark, coming up on 50 seconds. See Mike Peterson. Mike Peterson sort of a partner in crime with Kyle Berard. He's another guy really known for his transitional skating. So this, this, this obstacle isn't doing him too many favors, but he's competent. He can make anything happen. But well, you can see the pace tend to get picked up here a little more hurried as we get down to the last 30 seconds. Another kickflip 50-50 attempt out of Curtis Colomonico. Oh, nice. Wagner with the backside 180 fakie nose grind down the hub ledge. Getting pretty tech out there. Fabrizio going for the front side flip over the rail. We already saw him make the kick flip, so he's just trying to add on what he's already done. Coming down to the last couple of seconds, buzzer will be standing here. Oh! Uh, backside nose blunt slide for Jeremy Rogers at the buzzer. Yeah, squeaks that one in at the buzzer. Jason Barr giving it one more go, but even if he would have made it, it wouldn't have counted. It was after time. The buzzer had sounded. I talked about standouts. Let's take a look at some replays. Yep, Curtis Colomonico, frontside blunt slide to Fakey. Coming back with a kickflip frontside board slide. Yeah, he had a lot of tricks in this jam. Frontside 5 0, 180 out. Another kickflip frontside board. Doing it all. Fabrizio Santos. 
He had a lot of hot moves in there too. Keeping it simple with the front side board there. There's that kick flip over the handrail. Wagner Ramos, switch, front side nose grind 180. Switch, 360 flip down the stairs and a backside 180 nose grind. Really difficult tricks from Wagner. Same with Jeremy Rogers. Kick flip, front side nose slide. He didn't have any problem with that trick. He's liking the format and he's on course with our silent reporter, Catfish. What do you think about the jam session format? You guys seem to favor it. I favor it personally. Um, I could do a run, but this is just, it's just skateboarding, you know what I mean? You just do what you can do and, you know, I, I'm not really a, a ramp guy, so a lot of times it runs, connecting stuff, it's like what else for me, you know? What did you think about the tricks you threw down in that first run? I was happy. I couldn't uh, ask for more, you know? I was landing my stuff, you know, it worked out. Who else is looking good out here? I can't watch when I'm skating. <laughs> Jeremy Rogers looking very solid in heat number one. Here we go with heat number two of this first jam. Again, we've got seven skaters in this heat. Rodolfo Ramos, you see him at the top of the list. He's won this thing twice. And a couple of big names in here like Greg Lutzka and P-Rod, Paul Rodriguez, who, by the way, it's the first time we've ever seen him in an LG Action Sports World Championship event. And uh, who, who do you like here in this heat, Paul? Well, obviously, Rodolfo has a really good chance at taking this event. He's done it before. But this format isn't necessarily suited as well for him. He has tons of tricks, but they're not quite as hard as the ones that P-Rod and Lutzka are going to be bringing to the table. Heat 2 getting underway. We've got plenty more Skate Street action when we come back to the LG Action Sports World Championships. The LG Action Sports World Championships is brought to you by LG. Life's good and by BFD.com. The biggest names in action sports are at BFD.com. Welcome back to Key Arena for the LG Action Sports World Championships of Skateboard Street. While we were out at the commercial break, the action continued on the street course. Taking a look at some of the highlights here from last year's champ, Rodolfo Ramos. Clock continued to roll. We are currently right about the five minute mark and some change. These guys get an eight minute jam session. This is heat number two. Remember the course is divided up into two sections. There's two heats per section and only eight skaters are moving on to the final jam session. Some big tricks have already been going down. You saw P-Rod right there with the nollie heel flip nose slide. Such a technical trick. And Greg Lutzka has been bringing some heat to the rail as well with the front side big spin board slide. Just trying to add to what he's already done. Here comes Dane Brummett taking a crack at the rail here. Trying to look like a shove it to board slide there. Yeah, and that's actually switch stance. Switch front side big spin board slide. And uh, here's Greg Lutzka again with the front side 180 faking nose grind 180. Kind of put his hands down, but that's okay. He's not trying to film his video part right now. He's just trying to make some tricks for the contest. Tyler Henley with a kick flip front board attempt. And uh, P-Rod trying some more nolly flip variations onto the hubba right there. And so far, heat number two, it looks like these guys are skating at a lot faster pace than we saw to the guys in heat number one. Heat number one looked a little casual. These guys are really getting out there and throwing down a ton of tricks. They probably realized what they had to do because there was a lot of big tricks in heat one. There's a few, um, few of the heaviest hitters in this second heat. See Tyler Hanley really wanting that kick flip front board, couple attempts at that. Dane again with that switch shove it to board slide. Tulio coming out with the front side blunt slide down the hubba. And Greg Lutzka is trying to switch kick flip front side board slide. Now it's so hard to tell when some of these guys are skating switch. Like for instance, P-Rod just tried to switch front side feeble down the handrail. When you don't get to see him even riding up to it, it's hard to know because they, they make everything look so seamless. But switch front side kick flip board slide Lutzka, he's working on that. Probably gonna get it. Time winding down, coming up on the three minute mark. So five minutes underway, you see Tyler Henley getting uh, bunched up right there again. You know, you got seven bodies crammed into this one section of the course. And uh, you gotta get out of the way. If you don't make your trick, you gotta get out of the way quick because you're gonna have two or three more guys coming down that hubble edge of the rail after you. And an eight minute jam is a long thing to be skateboarding in. Right about now, these guys are really starting to get tired. Tricks are getting more and more difficult with every fall. Switch front side feeble grind from P-Rod. Dane Brummett with a front side 5-0 down the hubble edge. Lutzka 
Lutzka's like going almost every other guy here. Yeah, he's really gotten sort of hung up on this switch flip front board. He's gonna have to get that quick so he can move on because time is a waste. And again, this particular part of the course is only one part of your score. There's another section of the course that we still have coming up. We're gonna divide the guys up into two heats of seven again. And that's gonna be, you know, how well you skate each part of the course is gonna determine who gets into that uh, final section, which is gonna be our actual final for this event. So really big format change for this event here in 2008. You saw Tyler Henley a little bit ago do a big 360 flip down the stairs. There's Danilo with the front tail, switch front tail down the hubba. Lot to keep track of here. Got Tulio, another Brazilian here, trying the blunt slide down the hubba ledge. Rodolfo trying a front side 180 the hard way to fakey nose grind down that hubba. Super difficult trick. Greg Lutzka again hung up on whatever he's trying to throw down on the rail there. He's seen him waste a good couple of minutes trying to, trying to put that one down. We're just under 90 seconds. P-Rod having a tough time with the kickflip backside 5-0. Confident he will come back and get that though. See, Tulio tried to kick flip to grind up that hubble ledge. That's the first time we've seen anybody try to grind up one of the ledges here. It's like a fish swimming upstream, though, against this uh, seven other guys coming against you. There it is, Lutzka. Switch, kick flip, front board. And Such a difficult trick. And we are under 60 seconds here. You see Tyler Henley coming down the hubble ledge. Tulio getting hung up. Somebody got in his way. Time to cram in. Maybe two more shots here, depending on how fast you get at it. So everybody lining up, it looks like everybody wants to approach the same spot here. And remember, the judges are just looking for tricks made. They're gonna overlook any falls, see who tallies up the hardest tricks, the most tricks, and go from there. Tyler Henley with that kickflip front board, and it looks like he's trying to 180 out of that. 20 seconds, guys. 20 seconds on the Danilo trying the big spin board slide. p -Rod having a tough time. I can't tell if he's trying to kickflip to 5-0 down that Whoa. thing or 50-50, but he's been messing around with that for the last 90 seconds or so. Rodolfo just did one of the hardest tricks I've seen. Frontside 180, fakie, nose grind, 180 out. And that's time. Dane Brummett and Danilo De Rosario almost colliding on the rail there, and that's gonna do it for section number one. What do you think about standouts here in this heat? Boy, that's a tough call. Saw Rodolfo make a few key moves. P-Rod definitely had some hard tricks. Lutzka too. Those would be my top threes. Taking a look at some highlights from the jam. P-Rod with the kickflip backside 50-50. That's one of the easier tricks he did. So many technical variations from him. Rodolfo coming out with a little bit more power, keeping it a little simpler. Backside nose blunt sliding down that hubba. Taking a look at the leaderboard after you average the two heats together for the Jam 1 overall results. Jeremy Rogers on top of things, only guy in the 90s, 91.25. P-Rod and Greg Lutzka sitting in second and third. Now keep in mind, they're gonna get another Jam score here. And when you average that together with your Jam 1 score, that's gonna determine which eight of these skaters are gonna make it into the Jam final. Here the uh, man, the myth, the legend, B-Rod. Eight minutes is a long time to be out there on that court. A little tiring, yeah. I'm um, just trying to bring the consistency, trying to land the tricks. Uh, to be honest, I wasn't that happy with my first jam. I landed some things I wanted to do, but it took a bit longer. I'm just gonna try and tighten it up on the second one and see what happens. Awesome, good luck, bud. Thank you. B-Rod. So Greg Lutzka sitting in third after jam number one. Jam number two still to come, but right now we're gonna take a look at Greg as he talks us through this week's LG Trictionary. What's up, this is Greg Lutzka, and today's Trictionary is the front side 180 kickflip. First thing you wanna learn is a 180. You're gonna wanna learn how to ollie and turn at the same time. Kickflip like this, you're catching midway, you're turning, you wanna land both feet on the bolts, and you want to ride away nice and smooth. And that would be the front side 180 kickflip. You can see more Trictionaries as well as behind the scenes footage on the top rows, video clips from the biggest events, the craziest tricks, and the biggest racks, all at BFD.com. 
Maggie. Here we go. Jam number two. Heat number one. Seven skaters. Again, they're going to get eight minutes. It's how well you do overall in the jam that determines your score. Once the, we're all through with both heats, we average them together. Only eight skaters are making it into that final. And here, we got a couple of bigger hub of ledges, and we've got a couple of step up gaps. And there is nothing about this section of the course that is easy to skate. It's a big drop to flat. It's about five feet. And you see these wedges on either side going up. Those are pretty steep. They're not like real conducive to launching you into the air. You kind of bang into them and have to adjust your feet to ollie off of them. And then the hub is at either edge, very steep. Well, session number two just underway. We've got plenty more skateboard street action from inside Keen Arena when we come back. Seattle at night. It's a whole different city at night. Oh, look at that, a gang. No, I think that's a woman's track team. Oh, we have a lot of things happen here every now and then, different kinds of events. One event that's pretty special is the, uh, the LG Action Sports World Championships. Car 44 on its way. All right, buckle up. This might get nasty. It may be getting nasty on the streets outside, but here inside Key Arena, it's just getting heated up. We are in heat number one, jam number two here. These guys have eight minutes to uh, try to up the ante here. Of these 14 skaters, we're only taking eight into the final. And the action continued while we were away at the break. So you're looking at some of the highlights of the first couple of minutes here of heat number one, jam number two. And we're back at live action. There you see the clock, six and a half minutes to go. Curtis Colomonago with a frontside 5-0 down the hubble edge. See Fabrizio just sort of feeling out that gap because once you start trying tricks down that, you want to know what it's going to feel like when you land. Really got to soak up some Gs. Sometimes it's just easier to go up it. You see Curtis with the backside flip and Fabrizio 360 ollieing up that gap. Jeremy Rogers and Wagner almost both try to kick flip down that thing. And there you go, Breeze 360 flip down to flat. You mentioned soaking up the G's. That's one way to do it. Yeah, and that is a really difficult trick to flip and catch and be set up for the landing. Kyle Berard taking it easy, ollieing into the wedge. Yeah, Kyle, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but looking like he's way out of his element here, I'd have to say kind of the same thing for Mike Peterson, like we said in GM number one. These guys are more of transition skaters. Yeah, they're, they're wondering where the, the vert wall is. <laughs> and the 10-foot quarter pipe from the 2006 championships. And maybe the after party. <laughs> <laughs> but guys like Wagner are not messing around. A lot of Brazilians out here. Very serious, coming at this with sort of an attitude like, I'm here for business. I'm not going to let an opportunity pass me by. Uh, the Brazilians have been extremely dominant in the history of the LG Action Sports World Championships when it comes to skateboard street. I think the Brazilians won it every single year with the exception of 2004 when it was Ryan Sheckler. Oh, uh, Curtis coming out with a big 360 flip, holding his shoulder there. Looks like he's having some problems with that. Look, he strained it, maybe, uh, maybe uh, dislocation. Oh, that was a... Uh Switch stance, backside kickflip up the Euro gap for Wagner. It is really difficult to tell when he's skating regular and when he's skating switch. You see they've got that four foot quarter pipe that they can set up from to get up the step up gap there. I've been told by the judges that the quarter pipe is in play. So if you do tricks on the quarter pipe, that will count on your score. So I wonder why we haven't seen Kyle Berard and Mike Peterson hit that yet. I think, I don't know how much attention the judges are really going to pay to that because it seems like the majority of the action is going down down the gap up the euro and on the hubbas it's also maybe it's a little hard to get to people dropping in jeremy rogers tail slide 180 out mike peterson looking at trying to come down switch and if eight minutes felt like a long time on section number one i'm telling you it feels like about twice that amount of time on this section just jumping down this gap repeatedly. Sometimes it'll make your legs feel like you're running a marathon. Well, it's a bigger section of the course. You got a bigger setup area up top. And like you mentioned, you've got the gap and uh, it's a lot more distance from start to finish. So it's a lot easier to get winded on this section of the course. 
Things were pretty tight in that first section. Jeremy Rogers kick flip backside 180 to flat. Didn't quite come around all, all the way. Looked like he got about, at about 150 on that one. Ended up landing sideways. Mike Peterson going for the fake Yali. His board had different plans. Jeremy Rogers again with that kick flip backside 180. Almost one more shot at that. It looks like he's got it. He got around for the most part on that. Just has to stick the landing. Jason Barr trying to look like Nolly Crooked Grind. Yes. Down the hub ledge. Fabrizio Santos waiting to, he had something in mind. He had to cut it short. Somebody was on the flat in his way. I think the, um, the time is starting to take its toll on these guys. Seeing less and less tricks being made right now. Whoa! Switch stance, front side 180 heel flip from Wagner. Such a difficult trick, and he made that trick perfectly. Yeah, the falls on this section of the course are going to take a lot more out of you. Dropping that far down, just going from deck to flat. It's really hard on the knees, really hard on the ankles. There's Wagner. Wagner really starting to look good out there. He did a big flip up the Euro gap. Board doing a 360 flip, body doing a backside 180. And Jeremy Rogers sticking that backside flip. It took him three or four tries, but he hits pay dirt right there. And getting right back to the step up there in a hurry, almost running into Wagner almost, who's coming down the step up gap. Mike Peterson, it looks like he's decided to forego the fake alley to flat. There he goes using the quarter pipe. Yeah, blasting a nice lean air and then stumbling up the Euro gap there. Oh, Jeremy Rogers trying to kickflip backside 50 50 grind. Wagner and Fabrizio almost colliding there. Comes Jeremy Rogers, kickflip up the gap, gets a little hung up. We're on just under 90 seconds. And we talked about fatigue. You can see these guys are definitely getting winded here. Nolly, crooked grind out of Jason Barr. Yeah, at, at this point, I think the best anyone could hope for is maybe make one more trick and just be done with this and hopefully find themselves in the finals. Oh, fakey kickflip down the gap from Fabrizio with such style and finesse. That is such a big drop to just be able to soak up like that and make it look so smooth. Berard getting a little squirrely. I think he saw Wagner coming his way and was trying to get out of his way. That's what threw him off there. We're coming up on 30 seconds. Wow, we saw Jeremy Rogers do the backside kick flip down the gap earlier. Now he's trying its switch stance, not playing around. Well, he's got time to get one, maybe two more shots at this big 360 flip out of Wagner. And I believe that is, he's trying its switch stance. I was just going to say the same thing. I'm pretty sure that was switch. And Jeremy Rogers speaking of switch again. The attempt at the switch, backside, kick flip, 180. And that is going to do it. So jam number two, heat number one is in the books, and Jeremy Rogers' body language says it all. He took a pounding here. Talk to me a little bit about your run. Wow, dude, I, I pretty much did a lot of tricks down the, the gap. Switch a heel, front side, switch a front side heel. I like that. But I want to see Pierre Rod and my brother and Danilo. How hard is it when you're out there, when that eight minute starts, and there's just skaters everywhere? You have to pay attention. Someone can jump in your head. Everybody's, you know, like focus, and you have to pay attention. It's kind of crazy, but. Uh... Well, it was a heated jam session. Taking a look at some uh, highlights from the past eight minutes. And again, Jeremy Rogers, I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong here, but Jeremy Rogers looking pretty solid, but the Brazilians were on point too. Yeah, Fabrizio came out with some big guns, fakey flipping that gap. Jeremy Rogers skating switch, front side big spin up the Euro gap, looking good. So again, we're not gonna find out who gets top honors in this second jam until we get through heat number two. And again, seven skaters, eight minutes, and we'll see what this second group can lay down. Greg Lutzka was an obvious standout out of heat number two, jam number one. Currently our top three after the overall jam scores, it's uh, Jeremy Rogers, P-Rod, and Greg Lutzka. Those are your top three. And P-Rod and Lutzka are, are some of the best guys in the world at 
flipping their boards and catching them and landing them down big gaps. So they shouldn't have any problem skating this section. And of course, Rodolfo, he can do it all too. See Tulio, another one of the Brazilian contingent. Backside 50-50 down the hub edge. And Tyler, oh. Tyler Henley and Pirot taking a nasty collision. Giving each other a good knock, but they are okay. This heat just getting underway. We will see the conclusion of this heat as well as the final when we come back. Welcome back to the Pacific Northwest. We are in Seattle, Washington. It's the 2008 LG Action Sports World Championships of Skateboard Street. We are inside Key Arena. When we last left you before the break, we had just started jam number two out of heat number two. And the last thing we saw before the break was this nasty collision between Tyler Henley and P-Rod, Paul Rodriguez. As you can see in slow motion, P-Rod taking the brunt of that one on the left shoulder. Both guys shook it off. And uh, continuing to skate, and here we are back live. You see the clock there, 6.50 and counting down. Last chance for these guys to try to squeak into that eight-man cut. There's gonna be one more final session with only eight skaters out of 14. See P-Rod going down on the gap, getting a little frustrated. Might be shaken up a bit from that slam. Yeah, you don't really notice it at real-time speed, but on the slow-mo, he really did take quite the knock. Tyler Hanley didn't look too uh, too much worse for the wear on that one, but P-Rod got knocked pretty hard. I mean, that was a good bone-jarring hit there. Oh, P-Rod with the switch kickflip down the gap. That's what I'm talking about. P-Rod skates with so much finesse that he can just skate a gap like this and make it look like it's simple and easy when really it is it is nothing of the sort. So Tyler Henley with a 360 flip down to flat. Tulio de Oliveira with a backside crooked grind down the hub edge. And again, this group here, I said this out of jam number one, these guys look to be skating at a lot faster of a pitch than what we saw out of group number one. Group number one just kind of calm, cool, collective, and these guys really at it at a frenzied pace. Danilo Rosario going for the backside 5-0 on that hub ledge. Like I said earlier, that thing is really steep and it sends you sort of directly into the ground. Whoa, 360 kickflip down the gap from P-Rod. It was a crazy spin on that. It looked like he caught it really, really late. It looked like the board was far away from his feet. But Landa, that one, rode out of it clean. He's really good at just watching his board and waiting for the moment to just stomp it down and ride out. Look, Tulio, the last couple of attempts, it looks like he's trying to nollie to backside crooked grind. Speaking of backside crooked grinds, there's Dane Brummett throwing one into the mix. And it's good to see Dane Brummett out there. He's He's been on the tour for ages, and he's almost, I consider him sort of an honorary Brazilian. Yeah, <laughs> he, his wife's Brazilian, speaks some Portuguese, he's always down there. He's a veteran. The time uh, winding down here. We're just about 35 seconds away from the halfway point. Oh, and P-Rod with the front side kick flip down the gap. So It's so hard to do anything down a gap of this size. So to see somebody make one or two tricks is impressive. To see somebody like P-Rod who can just rattle them off, it's sort of um, incomprehensible. Lutzka going for a front side 180. Kick flip down the gap. See the crowd starting to feel it a little bit here, starting to get into it a little more. So we're just under the halfway mark. P Rod, wow. I mean, you can see by P Rod's body language, you can definitely see he's looking sore. That, I would have to imagine that that collision with Tyler Henley probably took a lot more out of him than you would initially think. No, I agree. But um, my guess is he's going to advance to the finals. These guys better save something because the biggest section of the course is yet to come. This is sort of child's play at this point. Well, he's got some big tricks down here in this uh, second jam. He's sitting in second place after the first jam scores. So I would have to say he's a lock for this eight-man final. Dane Brumman almost colliding with Tulio there. See Lutzka working the quarter pipe into the mix earlier? He did the front side, front side blunt. Yeah, Lutzka's no slouch on, on transition. He's sort of grew up skating a lot of skate parks in Milwaukee. Four seasons in Cream City. I'm not sure if he got in on the um, turf action back in the day. He might be a little too young for that. Yeah, but I'd, I'd say he's a little too young for, for the turf days. 
You never know, though. Right, yeah, he's uh, with skills like his, I, I think he may have been skating since birth. Front side nose blunt. Wow, that is Rodolfo. a big trick on a hub a ledge like that. He got a good pop off of that. He traveled a good chunk of distance before he landed in the uh, blunt slide. Well, I love the way Rodolfo skates, just with so much power and authority, he, he sort of explodes into his tricks and he explodes back out of them and you know whether he's gonna land it or slam because it's sort of all or nothing for Rodolfo. Greg Lutzke was setting up for something, but Rodolfo got in his way as he was coming up the step up. P-Rod going for the burial hit heel flip, not quite riding out of it, followed by Lutzka. See, it's after a while, your legs start to give out. You can't soak up those bails anymore, and a simple bail turns into a slam. Yeah, this is where the fatigue starts to set in. See Tyler Henley again attempting the 360 flip. And uh, you just you take a pounding. I mean, eight minutes of dropping down this five foot gap. I mean, like we said before, out of heat number one. I mean, it just, it eats away at you. It's hard on the ankles, the knees and whatnot. And the only thing that doesn't hurt is landing the trick and riding out of it. So that is what these guys want to do. Wow, Nolly, Nolly kick flip. flip into the wedge. And that is so much harder to do to land in the wedge because Let's say your feet aren't perfectly set up and you land on the wedge. It could be like landing on a banana peel. Yeah, you end up shooting the board off from underneath you and you wind up on your backside before you even knew what hit you. Just under 90 seconds. And he landed that one super smooth too, by the way. It was a clean landing road right out of that like it was nothing. Dane going for the front side flip up the Euro gap. You see he's sort of running out of steam himself. And Lutzka having second thoughts, coming back. Frontside kickflip? Wow. Yeah, beautiful. On the corner pipe. Again, transition skills coming into play. The judges are counting that part of the course, but we talked about this earlier. We don't know how much of an impact that's actually gonna have, but Lutzka's showing you that he can do it all. Dane Brummett snapping a clean nolly down the gap. Tyler going for a 360 flip. Tyler's liking those 360 flips down the gap, and so is uh, Tulio trying the same thing. And you see, even when these guys catch the board and land on it, 50% of the time, they don't ride out of it because if your feet are a little off, you know, one side of the board sort of digs in, throwing you off the other. See Greg Lutzkin just messing around with that quarter pipe now. He's obviously feeling pretty confident that he's got enough down as far as the gap's concerned. So he's just gonna ride out the rest of this uh, session here on the quarter pipe and just save it for the final round. Five seconds left on the clock. It's gonna be time for one more trick. And there is the buzzer. Wow, P-Rod finishing strong with the front side kick flip down the gap. And almost a huge collision at the end there. You've seen Dane Brummett Almost smacking right into a two. Look, look, look like he might have hit Tulio there. Tulio looking a little winded after that, but it is in the books. We are about to see which eight of these 14 skaters is going to make it into the final. Right now, take a look at some highlights from this second heat. And who do you think was the standout here, Paul? I got to go with P Rod and Lutzka. They had the hardest tricks. There's the front side big spin from Lutzka. Backside flip up the Euro gap, so perfect. Ah, textbook. A lot of time out there. You guys aren't used to skating that fast in such a cluster. What do you think about it? I feel like I'm having a heart attack right now. <laughs> no, it's good. The course is fun. Fans are loving it. I'm loving it. I'm having fun, so it's all good. You've been skating awesome. You consistently placed really well at these LG contests. What do you bring into Seattle? I don't know. A lot of fun. <laughs> there you go. Good job, bud. Taking a look at the leaderboard. Score on the left is jam one. Score in the middle, jam two. The ones in yellow, what you get when you average them all together, those are our eight finalists. The playing field's been leveled. Once again, it's up for grabs here. We've got one more section of the course. It's the finals with a king size set of stairs and a huge rail. We'll see the finals when we come back. The LG Action Sports World Championships has been brought to you by LG Life's Good and by ASA Entertainment, the leader in action sports event production. Visit us at asaentertainment.com.
We are back inside Key Arena. It has all come down to this last jam session. It is the Skateboard Street Final. We've narrowed the field from 14 down to eight. It's a clean slate. The title is up for grabs. There's one more section of the course to session here. It all comes down to this last jam session, and it's very similar to one of the earlier sessions. Of course, you got double edges again, you got a flat rail in the middle, but you got like a 10 or 12 stair set, and it's a lot steeper. Yeah, this is where it really gets serious. I was talking to Curtis Calmonico before this jam session started, and he was joking around saying he almost didn't want to be in it because he didn't want to face this rail. But he went out, he went out there. Yeah, it's a steep rail. I mean, you see uh, Rodolfo Ramos going the front side lip slide down that thing. I mean, that thing's steep. Look how fast they're coming down that thing. Yeah, I think there's pretty much four levels of danger out there. <laughs> the, the, ra the rail being uh, at the top. That's serious. And then, you know, you can jump down the stairs. That's a little, little less dangerous, but you can really do your ankles in, and then the hubbers are probably the safest part. But these guys are attacking every single part of this set. You see that Wagner Ramos just kick flip to flat down that thing? That is a huge, you're, you're traveling down. I mean, it's a pretty good chunk of distance, but you've got to traverse out about 10 to 12 steps. And it really isn't uncommon to see a skateboarder gra go out and try to skate a set like this and not land any trick, period. And these guys are just landing trick after trick. Yeah, it's, it's scary how consistent these guys are with each and every attempt going down the stairs. And there you see Curtis, he actually popped his shoulder out when he landed on his board. It's popped out before, so it's loose. You see he's in terrible pain. But I tell you, watching some of these guys ride up to the rail almost makes you want to look the other way. Greg really struggling with the kickflip front board, almost taking himself out, but managing to walk away from it. Yeah, that one could have been really ugly if you would have managed to get off the rail on that one. You're knocking the back of your head on the concrete solid on that one if you don't get out of that. But look at P-Rod, switch, front side lip slide down the rail. He's the one guy who really doesn't make this stuff look dangerous at all. And Greg going for the kickflip front board again, shaking it off. He's done. Jeremy Rogers slipping a tail slide revert into the mix. And again, P Rod, we talked about consistency. He said it at the top of the segment. He has been on fire here in this part of the course. And throwing a 360 flip down those stairs is incredible. Here we're taking another look at some of the highlights. Rodolfo Ramos with a hard flip down the stairs. Incredibly difficult. And the backside 5-0 down the hub. And look at the landing. He breaks the tail off of his board. But he does not miss a beat. Looks to his buddy, hey, give me your board. And he is back for more with the frontside 180 switch crooked grind down the rail. That's a hard trick to do on a curb, much less a 12-stair handrail. And take another look at this hard flip. They do not call it a hard flip for nothing. Perfectly landed, feet over the balls, just like they teach you in skate school. Jeremy Rogers coming out with switch stance. Frontside 5-0 down the hubba, followed up by a backside 5-0. Nolly backside 5-0. He really went at these ledges. Switch stance, frontside tail slide down the hubba, and then he moved on to the handrail. Front side board slide, feeble grinding it. Any trick down that rail is serious business. And you see, you make one trick, grab your board, make a U-turn, head back for more. And Greg Lutzka, front side nose blunt slide down the handrail. He has so many tricks, so much variety. You saw him there, kick flip, front side kick flip over the handrail. Bring a little crooked grind. Actually, nothing's little on this part of the course. And he's just landing so many tricks with such authority. Putting everything on the line there. That is a dangerous move. Front side 270, you see, he was psyched to make it. And then, like I said before, P-Rod, really sort of the one guy who you really don't even question whether he's gonna land on the rail and get into his trick. 
making things look too simple. Front side nose grinding down the rail. And look at that, 360 flip to flat. You see very few tricks going down these stairs that don't involve the rail or the hubba because it's so difficult to flip your board, catch it, and be set up to land because that is some serious G's pulling you down when you hit that flat. And the switch stance skills of Paul Rodriguez are incredible. Switch, front side board slide. There's another look at that 360 flip, one of the hardest tricks done in the contest today. And that is a switch stance kick flip. Switch, front side board slide. See, P-Rod made so many tricks and everything he did was as hard or harder than anything else that happened out there today. All right, you guys, are you guys ready to find out who won this thing? Well, now you guys are getting into it. That's what I like to hear. Your bronze medal goes to the Brazilian. You know who we're talking about. They call him Goo Goo. Put your hands together for Rodolfo. The silver medal goes to Greg Lutzka! And it is time to crown your champion right now. Your 2008 street champion and your LG Action Sports Championship, none other than Paul Rodriguez, they call him P-Rod! It was a hard fought battle in both the prelims and the finals. And how about Jeremy Rogers, who was the number one seed in both jam sessions in the prelims. He doesn't even make the podium here in the finals. He just gets edged out into fourth place. And a big congratulations to Paul Rodriguez taking the win in his first ever LG Action Sports World Championships of Skateboard Street appearance. Now you got tons of kids that are watching this at home. They're huge B-Rod fans. What do you have to say to all those kids that are up and coming skaters that want to be like you? Well, first of all, I got to say I love each and every one of you. Um, and the best thing is have faith in God, have faith in yourself. Don't let nobody turn you down from your dreams. You only live one time, and that means don't be lazy and go get it. Awesome. Congratulations. Great year. We'll see you next year. It was a great year. It was a great event. All the skaters as well as the fans loving the format change. That officially wraps it up for skateboarding here from the LG Action Sports World Championships. To find out more about the actual event or the athletes that competed, you can log on to www.lgactionsports.com. I'm Jimmy Coleman. On behalf of myself, Paul Zitzer, and our sideline reporter, Zach Yankush, a.k.a. Catfish, we thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.